Hello everybody. Welcome to the video where we are talking all things mystery quilt. Sunday stars. That's my mystery quilt for 2024. It is a paper piecing project and I hope that this video, the introduction video, answers all of your questions. But inevitably, <laughs> I always leave something out. So after watching this entire video, we're going to go through lots of stuff. After watching this entire video, if you still have questions because I left something out, please jump down to the comment section and uh, send me your question and I'll try to be as fast as I can to answer it, okay? We're going to go through all the details about this mystery quilt for this year and I am so excited because this mystery quilt is unlike any of my previous mystery quilts. There's no applique. That is not like me. I hope the heater in the background isn't too noisy. <laughs> Y'all bear with me, it's a little chilly in here. No applique in this quilt, and we are doing lots and lots of piecing, but we're doing foundation paper piecing. I hope that excites you. I know many of you have lost you already, and I'm so sorry, but I hope you still follow along in all the fun and hang out with us while we do this quilt. And just to let you know, these videos will be out on Fridays. We're going to be doing other stuff along with the mystery quilt. The mystery quilt will not consume my channel for the entirety of the project. We'll be doing other stuff here. So make sure you subscribe and follow along. Even if you don't want to do this quilt. The quilt name Sunday Stars. Sunday, not as in day of the week, as in ice cream Sunday. But this quilt looks nothing like an ice cream sundae or ice cream at all, except for the colors that I've chosen. That's why I named it Sunday Stars. And stars should give you some kind of hint about this quilt, okay? I'm not going to give out lots of information about what the finished quilt is going to look like, but stars plays a big role in this quilt, okay? So let's just go through the rundown. I've put together all kinds of stuff for you just to let you know there's all kinds of links down in the description box too so uh, you might find it helpful if you know how to access the, descri the des description box. <laughs> Words are hard today. Uh, there's going to be lots of stuff down there, references for you, okay? <clears throat> Pardon me. I need to slow down for just a second. <laughs> I'm just so excited to tell you this stuff. Okay, slow down, Lisa. The start date for the mystery quilt is going to be Friday, March the 8th. The videos for the mystery quilt will come out at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. Um, they will be pre-recorded because I'm trying to keep those videos short and to the point so that you can just get busy with your pieces and your sewing and have fun, right? So I'm going to try to keep the videos as short as possible each Friday but they'll come out Friday at noon uh, y'all this is gonna be a free quilt project so if you're watching this from the very beginning in 2024 it's free if you're watching this and it is 2028 it's free <laughs> if you're watching this 50 years from now and YouTube is still a thing I'm not here but I hope you do this quilt and it's free <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, don't feel pressured and rushed to jump on and print your stuff. All the videos will be here on YouTube when you're ready. And uh, yeah, take your time and have fun with it. And it is fr a free project. Now, other stuff that I do on my channel, like if I come out with a mug rug or a trivet or any other kind of little project, those will probably be paid patterns in the meantime, okay? Sunday Stars will be my free project for a good little while because I have invested so much time and energy into this particular pattern and videos for the whole thing, okay? Uh, I have created a playlist link for all of Sunday Star videos. This video will be at the very top. And each time we do a new video, they'll be posted right below all in order of the day that they were posted so make sure you save that link 
Um, so you can go where all the videos are grouped together in the description box, okay? You'll see an email address. There it is, sundaystars at gmail.com. Now, if you're watching this and it's 2025 or 2028 or 2030, <laughs> this does not apply, right? We're only doing this portion, the Zoom portion with this email while this quilt is going on. So this is the only thing that's really current, right? Sundaystars at gmail.com. Many of you have already emailed me and I've added you to the Zoom link list. But if you haven't already and you would like to be included in a Zoom session where you come and hang out and sew your pieces alongside of us, send me an email to this link. I'll add you to the list. Let's just talk about the Zooms for a minute. These are unlike the Zooms that we do on Creative Crew or even the Zooms that we do on Patreon, right? These will be sp sp specific <laughs> Zooms for Sunday Stars. While I love getting together and hanging out and just chatting and working on different stuff and being in big, you know, groups of my friends and we're just all randomly doing different things. I love that. These specific Zooms will be geared for the mystery quilt and sewing the clue for that week. Now, if you are partaking in the mystery quilt, but you're not quite, you don't have your pieces ready, but you want to talk about or have questions about the Zoom, please join us. I'm just saying it's not just one of our normal hangout kind of Zooms, right? Um, if you miss a Zoom, it's okay. Uh, you're not going to fall behind. And there might be weeks where I am hosting the Zoom, but I've already finished my pieces. Or I'm not ready to start sewing all of my pieces yet, but I'm there hosting and answering questions and all that stuff, right? So feel free to join us if you are partaking in Sunday Stars. We will have those Zooms Friday evenings between 8 and 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll start it at 8. I'll send a Zoom link out to everyone shortly before then. Each Friday that we do this, there will be a completely new link. So you'll have to check your email each Friday that you want to join for the new link to join in. Okay? And we'll start at 8 p.m. We'll go to 9 p.m. If there's lots of interest and lots of people still sewing, we'll go later. Um, but generally 8 to 9 and um but yeah if we're having fun and we're getting a lot done uh we can stay later <laughs> and this zoom might not happen every single week uh but i would really like to do it as much as possible okay all right zoom links this quilt i think i've mentioned it a couple times is a paper piecing project okay um we're going to have 21 clues to complete all of the pieces that make up this quilt top. Okay? So that's going to be 21 individual videos. And that sounds like a lot. But there's a lot of pieces in this quilt. I really wanted to break it up into bite-sized chunks because let me just tell you something. And I'm not trying to scare you. I'm trying to excite you. If you saw this quilt top, I know I have so many people who are just starting out in their quilting journey and uh, they're following along on my channel and other channels like mine and y'all are beginners just coming into doing quilting stuff. If you saw this quilt top, you might be super intimidated to even try it. But the beauty of it is the way I've broken it down into these chunks 21 different chunks following along with each one of the videos you're going to be able to put this quilt together I would say even as a beginner that's one of the reasons why I'm doing it paper piecing because we have lots of different angles and bias cuts which could be tricky if you're doing just normal patchwork piecing 
you got to cut precisely, you got to sew precisely with that quarter inch seam allowance, maybe even a scant quarter inch seam allowance. Paper piecing takes away all that. And so, even if you're a beginner, follow along, and I want you to feel confident that you can do this. Okay? 21 different little chunks. Little <laughs> chunks. Okay? <laughs> And then once we're done with the 21 clues, we're going to have some videos where we're taking clue number five and clue number seven and sewing them together, right? As an example, clue number 20 and clue number two, we're going to sew that together. So we're going to have videos after the 21 videos where I release clues. Okay. Are you still with me? I hope so. I hope I don't make this super confusing. This quilt is going to measure 67 inches wide by 87 inches long, right? I think that's a good twin size quilt. Now, many of you had asked me if I am gonna be offering variations like a throw size or a queen size. And I am not, it took me this long, but I'm getting hot. It took me this long just to do the math for this particular quilt. <laughs> and put together all the pieces and PDFs. There are so many PDFs for this quilt. <laughs> and it's taken me a really long time to do that. But here's what you can do. If you wanna make this quilt smaller, you're still gonna sew the same number of clues as we are. You're just gonna make them smaller, okay? So let me just show you this. I'm gonna to try to pull this up on the screen. There we go. Okay, so all of my PDFs, when I really, really recommend uh, downloading Adobe Reader. It does not cost anything. Adobe Acrobat Reader. It might be called DC. There is a free version. You do not have to pay for it. Or some sort of PDF reader that opens up a PDF document, allows you to change print settings and prints, right? Adobe Reader is fabulous, and that's what I use to print all of my stuff. This little snapshot is from Adobe Reader. All of my PDFs are formatted to print at actual size. You'll see the little blue circle, actual size. And then next to custom scale, you'll see 100%. That's the settings you want to print these pieces at to get them exactly the right size. That's for the quilt that measures 67 by 87. Now for those of you who want to do it smaller, you're still gonna do the same number of clues, but let's print them smaller, right? So in your print settings, if you uncheck actual size and you check custom scale, and instead of 100%, you do them at 50%, you are going to reduce the pieces by half. Now maybe you don't want to go that small, and I'm going to show you what that looks like. I'm going to show you what 50% looks like versus 100% here in just a second. So maybe you want to play around with the scale, but that's how you could reduce the size of this quilt and still do the same number of clues, same number of pieces, same templates and everything. You could change the scale in which you're printing with, okay? I dare say you could even enlarge the pieces if you wanted to. You still would do all the same numbers as we are, right? You're just changing the size by changing the actual size of the pieces. Okay, so let's take a look <clears throat> at what that looks like. So here is uh, the first clue, right? Uh, printed at 100% or actual size. This is the size of the template. And actually, the first clue, you're gonna end up joining this piece to this piece, right, and making it longer. It's just that the, this clue did not fit on a standard size piece of paper. So it's broken down into two sections, okay? Uh, but this is at 100%. Then I went and I changed the print settings to 50%. And do you see the size difference? Again, you could play with it. Maybe you do 75%. 
maybe you do 65%. The only thing is, once you commit to a certain size, you have to remember to print all of your PDFs at that percentage, right? So this is 50% and 100%. See how it really shrinks everything down? You're gonna end up using a lot less fabric. <laughs> Same amount of paper, a lot less fabric, reducing the size of your print, right? So if you do this, the fabric requirements that I'm gonna talk about here shortly, they do not, re they do not apply to you and you might have to do some math if you're not going scrappy, if you want to buy yardage. Um, I have not done that math for you, <laughs> right? Uh, I've only done the math for this, but that's how you could reduce the size of this quilt and make it smaller. All right, so I really, from here and to the rest of the video, want to break this uh, talk into five groups of topics, right? Because we're going to talk about um, colorways. We're, I'm going to show you an example of the colors that I'm using, and I'm going to show you uh, some examples of some other colors that I have placed on this quilt that look amazing. And that might give you an example of how to change colors for this quilt if you don't want to use the colors that I'm using, right? And not everybody wants to use the same colors I'm using. So we're going to go over some colorways and how to change colors and how to go scrappy. I'm going to talk about how much fabric you need. Uh, we're going to talk about some paper piecing techniques. We're going to talk about uh, some different papers to use and some tools that might help. Okay, so that's what we're going to cover next, okay? Broken down into different sections. So let's talk about some colorways. I'm going to bring this up on the screen. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? <laughs> Sorry, I am so thirsty. <laughs> I'm so thirsty. Give me just one second. Okay, I didn't like how the camera was zooming in and out when I moved. <laughs> okay, so these are my colors, right? Uh, I've chosen a light pink, a darker pink. It's almost sort of like a dust, dusty pink, right? Kind of a rose color. Dusty rose, maybe. <laughs> but you will see a light pink and a dark pink. You'll see a chocolate brown and it's all sitting on top of a very light tonal background color, right? This is what you're going for. You don't necessarily have to do these colors, but I want you to pay attention to this. The light pink and the dark pink. Those are my star colors. Okay, when we say Sunday stars, you know there's going to be stars in this quilt. The light pink and the dark pink are my star colors. The chocolate brown color, you could think of as border, framing color, an accent pop color, okay? This is going to frame your pieces. It's going to allow the eyes to drift over the top of the quilt very nicely. It's going to add some separation in between pieces. And um, there's actually quite a bit of pieces using this color. And you'll see a breakdown of that here in a minute. I think I, I think I showed that. If not, that was in my live last week. How many patches actually use the color brown? Um, but it's a lot. But it's not like a main focus fabric. But it plays a very important role in this quilt, okay? And then you have a background color. But do you see how each one of these colors stands alone and doesn't blend in and get lost, right? The background color is very light in contrast to the brown and the two pinks. That's what you're aiming for, okay? Um, you want each one of these fabrics not to get lost if they're sitting side by side, okay? 
So, um, I lost my thing. Hold on a second. <laughs> Colorways. Here we go. Okay, so I have some color examples for you. Okay, and what my hope is by showing you this will give you an example or a guide when you're picking out your own fabrics from your stash or at the store, or whatever, uh, to know whether or not they'll work or not. Okay, so this first example I really wanted to show you because there's the teal and the gray as my star colors. There's a lot of contrast between those colors and neither one would get lost next to each other, right, in the quilt. But then the peach color below it would be my border or my separation color. And see how that is, it would probably work, but it would be very faint. It kind of blends into the background color. Do you see that? Like if you were to step back, you kind of see the peach color but it also kind of blends into the background. So I probably would use the two top colors as my star, but I would think about something different in place of that peach, okay? Now I played with these colors in place of my colors on this quilt, and if I had not already ordered the fabric for this quilt, I'm telling you what, I would go with these colors <laughs> because I absolutely loved it. It reminded, the whole name of the quilt would be different. It would probably be Bumblebee Stars because it was so pretty and reminded me like of a bumblebee. But you'll see, I have a light yellow, a dark yellow, a black fabric on a, the same cream base. Even that light bright yellow still sticks off of that light cream base, right? There's definitely contrast between the two yellows and side by side you're going to see um, the placement of each one of those fabrics. That there is a fun little colorway for this quilt. And then you have your red, white, and blue, right? Because I had said in my live that I kind of also was thinking patriotic with this, right? So you have a sort of a medium tone blue a darker tone blue, the same brown fabric, and the light cream base. This, in place of my colors on this quilt, is phenomenal as well, okay? You just want to be careful because these two blues, like when I think of color ranges, I think light, <laughs> light, medium, and dark. These two blues, I would say, are medium and dark. <laughs> so you just kind of want to be careful not to get them too close together so that they just kind of blend in, right? You need them to, to be a little bit different uh, when it comes to the tone, medium versus dark, right? This one was really fun too. In place of the black, uh, or the brown uh, accent color. I did red and blue, a, a medium blue for my star colors and a dark blue for my accent pops. This was really nice in this quilt as well and it's keeping the same uh, light cream background color. That's pretty too. Now for my purple fans, uh, Y'all know my favorite color is purple, and I was half tempted to do this. <laughs> and this is three purples, and when I say light, medium, and dark, when I think of tones of fabric, this is a perfect example. For my star colors, I have a light and a medium purple, and side by side, you definitely see the two different tones of fabric. And then my accent dark color is a dark, dark purple. It almost looks black if you kind of squint your eyes it kind of looks black right but it's a dark dark deep purple and uh, this in that quilt is phenomenal with just a very neutral base right same color cream base all of these really pop on that light background so maybe your favorite color is green 
you choose a very neutral background and you go light, medium, and dark green. There's your colors, right? Maybe I have some friends who love orange. Maybe you do a light, a medium, and a dark orange with a neutral background. That would be gorgeous. Now, the next three pictures I wanted to show you playing with the same four colors. Okay, so you have a peach, a light teal background, a darker teal for a star color, and a black accent color, right? So on a teal background, this is how your pieces would be. Your star colors would be peach and a dark teal with a black accent, and that is lovely. So if a neutral, like cream colored, white colored background is not your thing, it doesn't have to be. You can totally swap that color out too. And this is how it would work, right? Using the same colors, let's swap out the background for the black fabric and do a peach and dark teal star with a light accent. That kind of works too. And see how the whole feeling of these colors change? just by swapping them around on how you're going to use them. This one is putting the peach as the background, which is kind of nice too. And then your light teal and a dark teal star with a black accent. So just if you have four colors in mind, try changing how you're going to use them in the quilt and see if that makes a difference and if you can't get them to work. Okay? And then what I really wanted to show you is this, okay? So if you have four fabrics and you are unsure if they work together, what I suggest is place them all sort of overlapping or sitting right next to each other, right? Close to each other. And take a picture with your cell phone or your tablet. And then uh, change it from colors to grayscale. This slide here is the same picture I showed you at the very beginning of the slideshow. These are my colors with all the color removed. So you can actually see the tones of the fabric next to each other. You can definitely see each one of these fabrics individually and nothing gets lost. If you take a picture of the fabrics you want to use and two of them are so close that they kind of look the same when you do a grayscale like this, you want to choose a different fabric for one of them. And I'm only saying this, you might really love those two fabrics, but I'm only saying this because if you don't, if you use two fabrics that are so close when they're in black and white like this, they're going to get lost and the full design of the quilt is not going to shine through in the end and I'm scared that you would be disappointed at the end. So now's the time to do the homework and pick the fabrics that work together so that you can see each one of them individually and they all hold their own all next to each other, right? So use that tool do a grayscale, remove the color, and see if you can see all four of your fabrics. Another thing I wanted to mention is you can kind of see that the fabrics that I chose are sort of smaller printed fabrics, right? Um, I think if you're going with a fabric that's not a solid, solids would work great in this quilt too, just to let you know. If you're going with a print, you probably want to choose a smaller print versus a larger print only because we're going to be chopping these fabrics up and lots of angles and I don't want you to lose um, a lot of the printed design in your fabrics if you choose a larger print, okay? Solids would work perfectly for this quilt just to let you know. I just happen to have picked pattern fabric for my examples. <laughs> Okay, so let me find out what we're talking about next. Now, I almost jumped ahead of myself because <laughs> I wanted to talk about 
what if you want to go scrappy with your mystery quilt this year? And I almost did. I almost buckled down and started pulling fabrics from my stash, especially in today's economic state. Um, scrappy, scrappy is definitely an option for you. So let's just talk about that. Let's say you're going scrappy and your star colors, you want purple and an accent. Uh, you're going to do a black color and the background is a cream color. So your purple colors, you want to divide your scraps into two basic piles, right? You want to put all your light purple scraps in one pile and all your dark uh, purple scraps in another pile. So when I'm using light pink in my quilt example, you'll pull from the pile of your light purple scraps. When I'm using a dark pink in my example, you'll pull from this pile of dark purple scraps. Mix them all up, pull random ones so they're all spread out in your quilt, but you can absolutely go scrappy. You're just going to make piles, right? light pile, a dark pile, okay? I hope that that makes it uh, simple and makes sense. Just make piles, put them in bins or whatever you need to do, but grab them and separate and divide in piles, light and dark. Okay, uh, next we're gonna talk about how much fabric do you need. Now this kind of blew my mind when I did the numbers. I'm going to pull this up on the screen. There is a PDF of this that you can print out and take to the fabric store or keep with you when you're at your fabric uh, bins in your stash and just keep in mind, you know, how much you need. This is quite a bit of fabric <laughs> for a twin size quilt. But let me just tell you, there are a lot, a lot, a lot of seams in this quilt. And the seams, surprisingly, eat up a good chunk of this fabric. <laughs> a good majority of this fabric will be in the middle of our quilt, is basically what I'm trying to say. So let's go over the numbers. The light pink, you're going to need two yards. Maybe for you that's light purple, right? It's a star color. Light pink, two yards. Your background fabric you're going to need six and a half yards. I'm using a cream color. It's actually a tonal. Uh, it's like a white with a cream print, right? Very neutral base color. Your accent color, your framing color, your separation color. I'm using brown. You're going to need four and a half yards of that. And then your dark star color you're gonna need two and a half yards of that, okay? So when you're just pulling from your stash or you're ordering, that's how much you need. Your back fabric, if you're using fabric that's 43 inches wide, you'll need six and a half yards. If you're gonna get the 108 backing fabric, you'll need two and a half yards. I just usually round up and say three yards. And then I have some back fabric in my stash when we're done, right? And basically that's usually what I do. And especially if you're ordering like at Marshall Dry Goods or a lot of places online, usually ordering in half yards, they don't let you do that anyway. So round up versus round down. If it's six and a half yards, you would order seven. It gives you a little leeway. And usually at the end of my quilts, I have some fabric that goes into my stash, right? Uh, the binding fabric, you're going to need five-eighths of a yard. If you're ordering somewhere, just order the yard. <laughs> you're going to have very little binding fabric left over. Again, this sheet, you can print off. There's a PDF down in the description box below, so you don't have to take notes during this video. You can just jump down there and print this right off. Okay. Paper piecing techniques. There are lots of them, y'all. <laughs> there are so many. Uh, and everybody likes doing it a different way. And that is okay. Here on my channel, I've showed it three different ways that I know of. So let me just talk about it for a minute. Okay? The way that I'm doing paper piecing 
for Sunday stars. You don't have to do it this way. And your quilt's going to turn out exactly the same. But you don't have to do it the way I'm doing it. And that's okay. All right. I just want to make you know, make you feel rest assured. You don't have to do it this way. <laughs> I'm going to show you some examples. And down in the description box, I'm going to put links to all of these things. So in your spare time, leading up to the start date of this quilt, you can go do some homework, do some research with these links, and figure out if you want to do the paper piecing a different way. You have time. We have like a whole month before we get started. So my first example, sorry, the little thumbnail's tiny. <laughs> okay, again, the link will be down. This is one of my videos. It's linked in the description box. If you haven't seen it, the candlestick trivet. That was a paper piecing uh, trivet that we did with featuring a candlestick, right? In this video, I used copy paper and I did not sew through the paper. I sewed next to the fold of the paper, which means that I could reuse my same template over and over and over and over again, saving lots of paper saving lots of ink although I have an eco tank printer I use very little ink it's very cost effective but I saved ink and paper time printing and prepping the pattern and when I was done I did not have to tear the paper off that might be the technique for you when we go into Sunday stars that might be your favorite way to go and you can absolutely do it that way you don't have to do what I'm doing okay if you have not seen that technique or this video again the link is in the description box here we go foundation paper piecing using freezer paper now y'all this video is six years old it was one of my first <laughs> my hair looks different I'm in a different noisy studio and uh I still think that this is actually one of my highest videos on all of my channel <laughs> and it's so crazy to me but in this video I do foundation paper piecing piecing it using freezer paper okay so if you haven't seen that you can get freezer paper that's cut to eight and a half by eleven I have some it fits it's already cut it's nice and flat it feeds through your printer it's more pricey versus using copy paper, right? If it's in your budget to use freezer paper sheets, that might be the way to go. And if you haven't seen that method, check out this video. Then we have, and this is the most recent, right? This is um, the heart trivet linked in the description box. In this video, I'm actually sewing through the paper, and guess what? I'm using the cheap 20 weight copy paper, right? That's what I buy to print all my patterns and all my invoices and stuff like that. I have tons of it. It's very cheap. It's like $6 a ream for 500 sheets. It's 20 weight copy paper, and I use it in this video with a short stitch length, and it tears off just fine, okay? Sunday stars I'm going to be using newsprint paper which I haven't used in any of my videos before so it's going to be something new sewing with you right uh, but I have worked with it in an, an example it printed fine and I will have that linked down below too okay but yeah check out this one I use regular copy paper 20 weight paper and then uh, I'm going to link her video right here. So the distance. Y'all, years ago, and I'm talking about years ago, my son was like two years old. It was a long time ago. <laughs> the very first uh, crazy quilt that I made, I was using a pattern in a book that was my aunt's. And that book had you trace the template that was in the book 
on muslin fabric and you used the muslin fabric as your foundation fabric and you never had paper to cut away and it was wonderful and that was the very first way that I made a crazy quilt umpteen million years ago <laughs> this video she shows you the same thing so if you've never heard of that process foundation piecing without the paper you're using fabric that might be your way to go I think there's more work involved with this because you're tracing on fabric or you're cutting fabric and adding freezer paper so you can print your pieces you're wasting a lot of fabric but you might want to check this out you might want to use this technique in this quilt and you might want to just store the knowledge in your head for a project down the way but if you've never seen it I'm going to link her video because I found it very helpful down in the description box below so go check her out and uh, make sure you give her a thumbs up when you go over okay so there we go lots of different techniques you don't have to do what I'm doing and we're all going to be just fine <laughs> okay <laughs> um, and just to let you know because I have all of these videos from years prior when I come to do a video on Friday I'm sewing through the paper I'm not going to be showing lots of different other ways to do it because I have all these previous videos and many more um, and not to mention y'all there are about a quadrillion million bazillion foundation paper piecing videos by some wonderful creators who teach a lot better than I do so um, yeah do some research if you don't want to sew through the paper like I'm doing and other techniques just know that when I come on Friday that's what I'm doing and you don't have to <laughs> okay so with that said let's talk about the paper because we hinted on it just a few minutes ago I'm using newsprint paper I'll put a link down to that in the description box you might have already gotten it when you watched my live from last week my main goal when when you're thinking about paper for foundation paper piecing you want to think about four different things right is it easy to tear is it easy to get someone had mentioned which I think is a wonderful idea if you're on a budget but just consider this someone had mentioned go to your local newspaper and get the off rolls from printing I think that is such a great idea but for someone like me that is a two-hour drive if they're even open I, I don't know if our daily newspaper place will even let you in I'd have to make a phone call but it's a two-hour drive to get there and two hours to come home right so I think it should be easy some for you to get well that's a great if I live closer I would probably do that for me that's not easy to get um, I think it should be cost effective I'm going to share a link uh, down in the description box and I'm going to talk about it here in a second and she gives several different examples of products you can use for paper piecing and y'all guess what we're all on different budgets some of you might be able it might be within your quilting budget for this year to afford the vellum which would be lovely which is wonderful for foundation paper piecing I am in the let's save a little money because I've already spent hundred and sixty eight dollars on fabric for this quilt <laughs> I bought a ream of newsprint paper and it was twelve bucks now it's e the same paper is like ten bucks from my understanding you know prices on Amazon fluctuate right but anyway for you it should be cost effective right and is it printer friendly my biggest concern with the newsprint and that's why I bought it before I ever mentioned it is because um, I wanted to ensure that it was printer friendly now we all have different printers understandably so but for my Epson eco tank printer I wanted to make sure the newsprint printed and didn't get jammed up or bring five pages along with it before I ever recommended it to you 
it still might not work in your printer. <laughs> right? It needs to be printer friendly. So just keep that in mind. I am linking down in the description box uh, an article by Julie. Okay, and Julie is at Generations Quilt Patterns. And she has gone through and she does a wonderful breakdown of several different papers and products for foundation paper piecing. She gives examples. Um, but y'all, check out, check out that website if you're unsure. But even Julie over there says 20 pound copy paper is fine. Y'all, that's what I've always used up until this quilt. 20 pound cheap copy paper. <laughs> um, but yeah, she gives lots of different examples and I wanted to share her website with you. Okay, so that is in the description box down below. And our last topic is what are the gadgets and the tools that you might need as we approach because you got about a month away to prep what are some things that you might find helpful when it comes time to doing some paper piecing for Sunday stars um, I'm gonna list off some stuff some gadgets some tools and like I say in many of my patterns right you may or you may not find this helpful I love an add a quarter inch ruler you might not like it. Uh, you might like using something else. So I'm just going to say these. You might agree. You might disagree. <laughs> That's the beauty of us all being different, right? Okay, some tools that you might find helpful. The add a quarter inch ruler. I have the 6 inch one and I have the 12 inch one. My 6 inch add a quarter 2 ruler is my favorite. It has the little wedge that helps you fold the paper on the lines, right? Um, glue sticks, my favorite are Elmer's, but you can use off-brand glue sticks as well. Um, I tend to like Elmer's because it releases the paper uh, pretty easily if you're light-handed. I can't speak on any other types of glue sticks, right? You might find a light pad helpful. Light box, light pad, light board, Y'all know my little LED tracing light pad. I think I'm going to break that out and use that in the placement and not pre-fold on the lines because we're going to have so many pieces to do. We could probably spend three hours pre-folding our templates. Because I'm sewing through the paper, I don't think I need to pre-fold my templates. I'm going to show you that. Okay, so you might find it helpful to break out your light pad. Uh, some tweezers might be helpful because when you start uh, adding these clues together and sewing them, there's going to be a tiny little sliver of paper in the seam allowance. You might find it helpful to have a piece of t a pair of tweezers to pull that little tiny seam allowance strip of paper out, right? Or you can just use your fingernails, usually like what I do. <laughs> a rotor rotary cutter for fabric and a rotary cutter for paper. I have different ones, right? I have my little white rotary cutter that I cut paper with. It's gonna save so much time when separating these foundation paper, papers and templates, right? You can use scissors if you want, but I find it fast just to use a rotary cutter. I have one for paper and I have one for uh, fabric. Uh, you're gonna need a ream of paper. And I say that only just to be on the safe side. You're going to notice once we break into the clues, like clue number one is the PDF is two pages, and I'm going to tell you to print six copies. That's 12 pieces of paper, plus a piece of paper for your templates. That's 13 pages for clue number one. Is it necessary? Yes, if you're sewing through the paper. If you're just folding on the line and using the same template, you don't have to print that many. Do you know what I'm saying? So, um, but get yourself a ream of paper. And uh, a regular ruler that you can use with your fabric rotary cutter would be really helpful. A cutting mat, pressing board, uh, what else? Gallon size Ziploc bags. One of the reasons why I'm using paper, actually there's two main reasons why I've chosen to use 
sewing through the paper, sewing on the line for this particular quilt. There's a couple reasons. The first one is there's so many clues, so many pieces. Each one of these clues is labeled. So I know even if this gets mixed up with something else, if I leave the paper on the back, it tells me what clue this is. Isn't that lovely? So I don't have to worry about mixing up my pieces. Another reason why I've chosen to sew through the lines is because we have lots of angles, which means lots of seams on the bias. I plan on leaving this paper in and assembling my pieces like that. That's gonna help stabilize my fabrics so that when we're sewing on the bias, these bias seams will be stabilized and I don't have to worry so much about stretching out those pieces and having fullness or wonkiness in my quilt top, right? Yeah. And um, plus, there was one other reason. I forget. <laughs> oh, chain piecing. Pardon me. I plan on doing lots of chain piecing with this quilt because I think it's going to be the fastest way to go through these clues each week. For example, clue number one, we're gonna have 12 units to do. Well, I plan on chain piecing mine. So for each one of the seams, I'm just gonna be chain piecing. And because we're sewing through the paper and the fabric, I don't have to worry about the paper falling off my fabric if all of those pieces tumble off onto the floor behind my sewing machine. Do you know what I'm saying? Years up until now, I have always used the method for paper piecing where I am sewing next to the folded edge and I'm not sewing through the paper. And I usually use a glue stick to adhere my paper foundation to my fabric as we go along. Well, like I mentioned a few minutes ago, the Elmer's glue stick sticks really well, but it eventually the paper does come off, right? Well, I don't want to chance chain piecing lots of pieces. Chain piecing is going to save you a lot of time. So you want multiple pieces, right? That the paper is going to fall off the fabric. And I'm going to have to try to fussy align that back up so that all my pieces are exactly right. So I'm sewing through the paper on this particular quilt. Those are my reasons <laughs> that I'm doing it a little bit differently. Um, and I hope I have not left anything out. I know this is a lot of information. You might even need to come back and watch it a second time, right? But definitely go down and open the description box because there's lots of stuff down there. Um, and if you have questions, feel free to jump down into the comments section. I'm trying to be quicker than I have been recently and answering questions it's just me y'all <laughs> and i i have so much stuff going on i try to be as fast as i can okay you can also which is really wonderful y'all you can also jump over to the creative crew and ask a question there because there's lots of people who are willing to help you there that are a lot faster than i am <laughs> right and uh, you'll probably get an answer much quicker if you jump over to Creative Crew. That link is in the description box. You know, I really look forward to this quilt. I hope you're excited. If you're not excited about paper piecing, I am so sorry. And if you're not excited about a mystery quilt, I get it. <laughs> I still hope you follow along. Um, believe me, there will be lots more of applique soon to come that's my favorite thing um but i'm tr my goal with this quilt too is to branch us off in getting us comfortable with other quilting skills i say applique is my favorite thing it might turn out that i changed my mind and foundation paper piecing might be my new favorite thing right you never know <laughs> All right, everybody. I love y'all so much. Um, wow, I have lots of stuff coming out this week. And uh, 
for sure the place to find me is Fridays. This video is not coming out on a Friday, but for sure the place to find me is on a Friday here on my channel, so make sure you subscribe and follow along. Bye everybody. I'm super excited and stoked about this quilt. We'll see you really soon.